All right, guys, I am here today with Simon Coward, who's the director at Aquabotics. So welcome, Simon. Thank you very much. Pretty excited to uh, hear from you today. So tell us, what, what is Aquabotics? Because when I first heard it, I wasn't sure myself. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think people think we sell like pool floaty toys and speedos and stuff like that. But <laughs> we're actually a paddle sports company. Uh, so we've been around in Calgary for nearly 20 years. The iteration now my wife and I have owned it for coming on 10. We, we have a retail store, so we sell whitewater kayaks, recreational kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, rafts, and all the accoutrement that comes with paddling and being on the water. We also have a very large uh, instructional program as well where we run courses for beginners all the way through to quite advanced paddlers. We also run international trips as well. And then we have a couple of side businesses to keep us going in the, in the winter months. So we sell roof racks as well, uh, like sport racks. And then, uh, and we also do split boarding as well in the in the winter time. So avalanche safety courses and backcountry snowboarding stuff. Fantastic! And I'm assuming that um, this must be a passion of yours, hence getting into this industry. Yeah, definitely. I've uh, my my background is in in paddle sports. I started teaching whitewater kayaking and and um, being a raft guide in probably 1999, I think, or 2000, around then. And so I've basically been at it ever since in, in different variations. So certainly is a passion, absolutely. Nice. That's great. What would you say you love the most about kind of the paddle sports industry? The community. is That's a really easy answer, actually. I, I think for us, the thing that makes it tick is that over the years, we've been fortunate enough to be a part of a, of a growing and very, uh, very active and very passionate community. And, I, and, and we've, we've, yeah, like I said, we've been super lucky in getting involved in that. And we're still, a, I think, a pretty integral part of the paddling community here. So I think that for us is our biggest sort of success hat that we wear. And it's the thing we get the most stoked about. Cool. Very cool. Uh, it, uh, in my research uh, into you guys, I noticed that it seems like you're very purpose driven. Um, and there was something that stood out to me. There was a thing called breaking free on your um, Facebook page. Oh, right, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about what that is? Yeah. So Ben Clark is a guy who's been a paddler, you know, a very um, well recognizable character and paddler in our paddling community here. And I've known him since, since I first got here, so like 2004, 2005. And so Ben's gone through a bunch of addictions, problems and mental health issues and such. And so he's just, he's turned 41 this year. We're all having our midlife crisis right now. So this is his. <laughs> um, so he just turned 41. So he's doing a project which is paddling 41 rivers in 41 days for his 41st year on the planet. And it's all in a drive to help uh, create awareness for mental health and depression and addictions and so on and so forth and so it's something that we've been working with uh with ben for a while now on his the league of beautiful minds that he works on which is sort of basically a, a help group in some ways for uh for people who are struggling and, and using the outdoors as a to help heal and cure people sort of thing fantastic that's really great it, it speaks a lot to of course the community you're describing but also i'm guessing the culture at aquabotics as well yeah very much so like we we're definitely it's it's funny i'm 40 now and i see a lot of our staff are in their 20s you know they're living the dream kind of thing and they're they're in that time of their life and and it's a very it's interesting because they're very accepting they're very socially aware and all that sort of thing and it forces someone who's a little older like me and maybe a bit stubborn and stuck in my ways to to uh to be really open to that stuff and i think our community at large is quirky it's full of quirky characters and people who you know maybe didn't necessarily go into the mainstream sport thing uh there's a lot of people that have gotten into it later in life as well and it's just this real melting pot of people and so I think that creates a very welcoming, understanding and engaged community. And I think that, you know, the breaking free thing with Ben, the support that he's gotten from our local community and from Colorado, where he spends a lot of time, has been pretty overwhelming for him. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. And it's nice to see um, a community that is supporting something like that and um, really kind of embracing it. So yeah. very, very cool. Um, when we talk about um, that community, it also sounds like education is a big piece um, as well. And I noticed there was a like plethora of information on your YouTube channel. Uh, what would you say is kind of your favorite? Uh, do you have a favorite piece that's on YouTube that people could go check out? 
Man, I don't know. I wrote them all, so I think they're all amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that I think the thing that's been the most popular on that, like the educational videos, uh, for one, once people get into the sport, are really valuable because they can take a course and they have this resource that they don't have to pay a few hundred bucks a weekend to use. Right. So it gives them that, that resource to go back to. However, we do, we've done these buyer's guides, quote, unquote, quote, but not in a salesy way. So we kind of break down, if you want to get into whitewater paddling, what are you going to be on the hook for? You know, whether you buy it from us or someone else, it doesn't matter. It's just to kind of demystify that whole process because you can go into a shop and it's, and you feel you need this and I need this and I need that. But really we break it down into what you need, what you might want. And then as you progress in the sport, some of the things that you might require to you know, do multi-day trips or whatever. So we've done that for kayak fishing. We've done it for recreational kayaking. We've done it for whitewater kayaking and the views that they're getting. It's really wild. And a lot of conversations, it's quite kind of cool. We now have email, then we had Facebook and now we have YouTube and we're having conversations with people in Ireland and New Zealand and, continental Europe and such. And so people are finding them and they're, they're finding value in them. So I think they're probably our, for newer paddlers, probably the most valuable thing that we, we've put out so far. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And it's pretty cool to see that you're having an impact on your community here, but also like on a global scale, which is pretty exciting. It's wild. It's like, mm-hmm. it's wild. I have this conversation with this, uh, I found out, He's a really, he's a real cheeky kid. He's from, uh, he's from Scotland, and it turns out he's 15. And he comments on every video that we put out. And one of them, we posted a kayak fishing video, and the response was "Ooh, kayak fishing!" Right? And he was just, and I'm like, "Who is this guy?" So I emailed him back and I said, "Man, totally appreciate the standpoint, but we have a lot of kayak fishermen who have who subscribe to our channel." And, and then he got back to me. He's like, yeah, man, just white water is my thing. Just keep the white water stuff coming. And then he posted another one and I got in a conversation with him. He's like, yeah, man, I'm like a 15 year old kid in Scotland and I've got nothing better to do. So I just wanted to like comment on these great videos. And so I've now got this weird relationship with this 16 year old kid or whatever in Scotland. Very, very cool. Very cool. What would you say that you guys do um, better than everybody else in your industry? I think we pull everything together better than anyone else. I think many kayak retailers don't have a kayak school. And so we have our kayak school, which allows people who want to get into paddling to try the boats out first, to do the courses. And we bring in instructors from all over the world who are really high performers. You know, it's not, you're not going to get a, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to go on a high end white water course and have a, a 20 year old university student kind of teaching it. They're professionals. They're people that want to do it. And then we tie in that YouTube piece, so that information piece as well. And then we have our international trips as well. And our website, you know, the internet is such an important tool for businesses and individuals like consumers or whatever, if you're just trying to find information. Our industry has been a little bit slow on the uptake on that. And so four or five years ago, we made a a real commitment to that. And so in a short answer, which I'm not very good at, uh, is I think we tie the whole package together really well. Our goal when we set up the website was to provide where we coined it was an in-store or on-water experience online. So that's when we started our YouTube channel because it's like, how do we give people an on-water experience on the internet? It's like, well, we create really good high quality educational content. So that was that piece. And then we have a ton of information on our website. We have a really like stacked blog. We have tons of good information on there and, and we're working on another website, which is a crowdsourced um, paddling location uh, website that's going to be a worldwide resource. So all of that stuff, we tile that in together. And I think that creates a pretty cool business and a cool place for people to visit. Fantastic. Now you've piqued my interest. Tell us more about this crowdsource. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, tangent. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's, it's called Paddling Maps. Like the website address is paddling, paddlingmaps.com. One of the things that people have been noting in the paddle sports industry is we're losing interest with this next generation. It's all about that quick fix, that quick thrill, that quick um, excitement or whatever it is. And sports like golf and everything are seeing it as well, you know, where it just takes too long to do it and people are busy and they have a million things on the go. So we're like, so everyone's, everyone's kind of complaining and saying like, we're losing the millennials and this and that and the other. And I always like to see problems as a potential sol- solvable, like a solution. Tell my three-year-old that, right? Give me solutions, not problems. <laughs> I, I had the idea 
I was like, how, how do we communicate on their level? And everything's on devices, right? So there's a web, there's a, there's an app called trail forks, which is a mountain biking app and it's crowdsourced and it's very, very popular. It's done by pink bike. Why don't we have anything like that for kayaking? So I went to a paddle sports, paddle sports retailer show last year and just would like talked at anyone who would listen about how this needed to happen, but didn't know how we we're going to finance it. Cause we figured it was going to cost 70 grand or something to get it built. Right. Talk to a, a, a publisher down there from rapid magazine. He's like, well, forget everyone else. How about you and I just do it to start with and see what we can do. And so we were, I was like, Oh, that's way easier than banging doors. So we did that. And we've got it to a point now where we have close to 300 rivers and lakes in across Canada and a few different countries at the moment. And we have 30 regional moderators. And so in each of the regions that we've identified, the moderators basically moderate the content. So if you were to add a lake or a river here in Calgary that wasn't already on there, you add all the information, takes five minutes, and then it, um, it basically sends a message to the moderator. They just check it over and say, yep, this all looks good, approve it, and then it's available for everyone to use. Uh-huh. And then the big piece of it is that we're working on. So it has a really detailed mapping function on it as well, hence the paddling maps. So right now you can just download a file onto your phone and it's a GPX file, right? So you can use all of the information offline. Mm -hmm. When you're paddling, most of the time we're out of cell phone reception. But the next piece of it is over the summer and the fall, we're building an app and the whole app will be offline. So you can download your region and all the maps are there and everything is there. It will track you via GPS and blah, blah, blah. So we have moderators in New Zealand. We have moderators in Kenya. We have a moderator in Colorado. uh, And we've got moderators all through Canada. Uh, And so, yeah, we're just slowly building that up. And hopefully in the next few years, it will become a pretty indispensable resource for paddlers. And, And a great thing for beginners. It's not just for, you know, stream kayakers it's you know we have 40 or 50 lakes on there right now so recreational paddlers can use it and and uh, hopefully it'll be good for them too fantastic what a great idea mm. yeah. i think so yeah, yeah <laughs> i would use it i would yeah. use it that's really neat really yeah. neat. um so i'd love to dive a little bit more into your life as an entrepreneur because i'm sure you know growing this thing hasn't been an easy journey What's probably one of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome as an entrepreneur? Buying a retail store, not ever having done one day of retail work. Okay. That's probably the biggest obstacle. I I bought Aquabatics because I didn't know what else I would do. (laughs) And I wanted to own a kayak school because my background is kayak instruction and rafting and stuff. So I started the kayak school for the past owner. Nice. Uh, as an employee and then I was I, I just pestered I'm like can I buy the kayak school can I buy the kayak school can I buy the kayak school and she's like no you can buy the whole thing no <laughs> fine I'll buy the whole thing so I think that for me was going into retail with com- like like no idea what retail actually entailed was the biggest obstacle very cool are there even just one or two kind of lessons that you could share if somebody else was starting up in your industry you'd say don't do this or do this first <laughs> I think the, the thing to do first is, is, and I didn't do it, is to look within co- like comparable industries. Mm-hmm. Like, not exactly because people aren't going to give you information in the same industry, but go out and have a really actionable strategy moving into it. Because we spent the first three or four years completely being completely reactive. Oh my God, cash flow's down. What am I going to do? Uh, inventory is low what are we going to do oh man we've got too much inventory here what are we going to do and so i felt like that those first three or four years were very very reactive and it creates sort of undue stress to some degree because you don't know what the next step is and you don't know what the where the next punch is going to come from or whatever and so now looking forward into future opportunities potentially at the moment i'm doing a lot more groundwork and a lot more legwork leading up to the decision than i did it, that, that would be my biggest thing is get as much information as you can have as good an actionable strategy as you can be ready to be flexible, but have a good idea of where you're going and, and how to adapt as, as things change. Awesome. That's great. Great advice. And I think we can all learn a little something in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about uh, like you yourself as a leader? Cause you have a team, of course, are there things, um, things or people you look to, um, to go for advice, books you read, any kind of tips or tricks there? 
Yeah, my, my dad actually, he was a he wasn't an entrepreneur. He wasn't a small business guy, but he worked as a CEO of a couple of pretty big companies growing up. And so I grew up in that environment of having a, a father figure who worked a lot of hours. Was but it's certainly not a sob story. He was super available to us, but he worked a lot and he was very pretty driven um, and had a great support person in my mum. And so now I'm in this position where I work a ton and my wife works a ton, but she's this amazing support network, right? And so I think I look to my dad for a lot of just sagely wisdom. You know, he's had a lot of years of, of working in management and being a leader of much bigger teams than I deal with and in a different time as well. So it's actually quite a different perspective than a lot of the media that you get right now. Like if you're reading books that are really current, you know, everything's about how to deal with, you know, working with millennials or working in this, in this current environment. I think there's a ton of value in the hard lessons learned in all the years, like leading up to this, you know? So I think I find a ton of value there. My wife is, you know, super patient with me and listens to my complaints and my, yeah, this is awesome. This is the best day ever. Blah blah blah, and has great. I think she's better at standing back from it all and going, "Dude, this is what your job is. Do your job, right? <laughs> this is a great idea, but it's not going to make any money, and it has no legs. Like, like keep it on the back burner, and let's see if it makes more sense." So for her, she's a really good leveler for me because I think like a lot of people who are, you know, interested in business and this whole game, it's. Oh, what's next? What can I do now? What can I do now? And Nikki's a really good, is a really good leveler for me there and, and keeps things good. So I think they're the two people that I lean on the most. And my mum is the best when things are not going good. She gets the phone call in Australia and makes me feel better. So they're my three people. <laughs> That's really great. I can so relate to the mum thing. She's my first dial when I'm having yeah. a hard day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Very, very cool. What uh, are you most excited about for the future of Aquabox? Man, all of it, I think. Um, we, we, we're in a position now where we've got like our, our, our store and our inventory manager, Tom, has been with us for four or five years and now he's like an integral part of the business and he, we're, he's, he's going to be coming in in sort of a shareholder kind of role moving forward. So that was actually one of our, that was one of our things when we started out. It was like we want to create long-term meaningful well-paid employment for people in an industry where that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. It's quite often seasonal and it's hard to keep people on full time and, you know, retail doesn't pay super well and all that kind of thing. So we're in a position now where we've grown enough and we've got the infrastructure in place where Tom is now kind of becoming a part of it, which is really exciting for us. And we've got, uh, we have some instructors that have been around for a number of years, a couple of Kiwis who are actually applying for permanent residency right now. And they're, you know, sort of making a commitment to being around for a little while. So that kayak school that's been my baby for so long, mm -hmm. it's kind of a yin and a yang thing. But I know now, you know, identified now that our kayak school will actually, if I'm at the helm of it now, even though I'm passionate about it, it'll actually probably take a turn south because I don't have the time and the energy to, to, to dedicate to it. So now we've got these young, super motivated people that are really happy to work with me kind of driving that whole thing forwards and that I'm really stoked about. It's, you know, having the clarity to go, yeah, man, you're sucking at this right now and you have the right people in the right place at the right time to, to go, okay, you run with this and do what I did 10 years ago. It's a pretty damn good feeling. I'm really psyched on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's super cool. I so appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us today. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. We business owners, we all like talking about ourselves, so it's pretty easy. We sure do. <laughs> <laughs> all right.